I am joined by really the man that needs no introduction, John Legend, the founder of Loved One. Hello. Brooke and I already know each other. I've been on her podcast already. Yes. But, and we, our kids go to the same school now. Right, exactly. <laughs> these, when you become a parent, these are the things that make you very excited. Yes. Like getting into the school of your dreams in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, so I've been using Loved One for about a year now, and I think it's a really revolutionary product for a few reasons. One of them is the fact that you formulated with people of color and melanated skin in mind first, not as an afterthought. Why was that important to you? Well, first of all, we have skin. <laughs> and we are a growing um, minority in this country, but the majority of the global population mm -hmm. And so the idea that there wasn't uh, a lot of skincare being developed with us in mind um, was something that needed to be corrected. Like yeah. we needed to have products that celebrated our skin, thought about, um, and you know, skin is skin in a lot of ways, but there are some things we over index for, we're more likely to have things like eczema, things like hyperpigmentation, um, certain issues that we deal with more than other people do, but there weren't a lot of products being developed with us in mind. And not only that, even in dermatology school and all these other places where professionals, professionals are getting prepared to deal with skin, they're not really focusing on our skin very often. Yeah. And so we thought that was something that needed to be addressed. And we thought, why not create something that was beautiful, effective, felt luxurious, but was also um, accessible and affordable for everybody. Yes, and you worked with an incredible black dermatologist, Dr. Yes. Boyace. Dr. B, she's yes. wonderful. Um, she helped us think about all of our ingredients, think about what conditions that we wanted to really focus on and address. And we've been so mindful about really centering our skin uh, when it came to product development, marketing, everything that we do, our whole reason for being. Um, and she's been right at the center of that. Yes. And as I'm talking to you, you have perfect skin. Can we all attest to this, right? <laughs> so, Thank you, Brooke. So, so I'm wondering what skincare concerns have you had in the past or were you, you know, what was your kind of like hope and desire that loved one could address in terms of skincare concerns? Well, I have to say I give my parents some credit because yes. we got good genes yes. and my dad... <laughs> If you saw my post, my mother's 70th birthday, she still looks amazing. And, <laughs> and um, you know, so some of that, you know, thank God, thank my parents. Um, but I think we all still have to be mindful and we have to take care of our skin. We can't take it for granted. The black don't crack, you know, all those things. Right. Like we still have to do some work and care yes. and, and, and be intentional about it. And so we want a loved one to give people the tools to be intentional about it. Yes, I mean, that's so important. Black don't crack does not mean that you can neglect your skincare. <laughs> exactly. um, I think you spoke to this a little bit, but prioritizing accessibility and inclusivity and the mm -hmm. price point of loved one. I mean, to have so many incredibly well-formulated products under $15 and to be able to walk into a CVS or a Walgreens and just see the product there, right. why was that important? That was important because, you know, there's a lot of celebrity lines. There's a lot of you said uh, it, not me. Luxury. <laughs> There's a lot of luxury skincare lines, and I think it's great. You know, if you're selling something that's really expensive for people who can afford it, um, that's wonderful. But we didn't want our mission to be to address the needs of melanin rich skin and then be out of the price range of a lot of our target customers. Mm. Um, so we wanted to make sure we know there's a wealth gap. We know there's an income gap uh, in this country. And you can't say that you're centering uh, the needs of melanin rich skin, mm -hmm. but then being out of reach when it comes to affordability and accessibility. So we wanted to make sure people could actually afford to use something that we're creating with them in mind. How did you come up with the name Loved One? Because it doesn't, and I'll say, it doesn't say like John Legend skincare. Like, you know, when, right. you, when you come across it, it's just like, oh, this is this very chic kind of elevated feeling brand. But I love that name, Loved One. Well, obviously, I don't own the word love, but it's central to, <laughs> central <laughs> to who I am yes. as an artist. And even when I go out and speak um, at graduations and, and I talk about my political philosophy, 
so much of it is centered around love and the idea not of just of loving yourself and loving the people close to you, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, about loving even people you don't know. And that means seeing them, caring about them, uh, having empathy, uh, valuing their humanity. And so love is central to me and it always has been. I even have a wine brand called LVE and so, many of my, so much of my music has been around that theme of love. But I also thought about what personal care and self-care and yeah. skin care really is. It's an act of love for yourself. And it's also an act of love that you share with your loved ones. So uh, if you have a family, if you have a partner, if you have anybody you spend a lot of time with, uh, some of that time may be spent in the bathroom together uh, sharing uh, a self-care ritual. And so we thought of really celebrating that idea of us being in communion together in the bathroom and sharing that ritual together, sharing it with your loved ones. And so that really encompasses all the ethos behind what we wanted to create. And again, when we thought about celebrating melanin rich skin, making sure melanin rich skin was at the center of our product development and our focus, um, we also wanted to say, we are loved, you are loved, mm. um, and you're not overlooked, you're not, um, you know, underserved. We want to give you uh, a product that's really with you in mind and celebrating who yeah. you are. That's beautiful. And and your whole family uses it. You and Chrissy, everybody, me kids. and Chrissy, the kids. Um, if you see our campaign, they're all included. And it really is like a family product and it's a family business for us. It's something we care deeply about. We share the products together. We, we don't just, you know, try to sell them to everybody else. We use them at home. And, um, and it, you know, it's a part of our routine. What's your favorite product? What are your kids like? What is Chrissy like? We need like the full family rundown. Me and the kids all love the face and body moisturizer the most. I, the kids, it's, a good one. it's so good. Um, I run into people that are dealing with really dry skin and eczema. I met a guy the other day who came up to me and was like, I really want to thank you for loved one. Most people come up to me and like, you know, uh, I played all of me at my wedding or... <laughs> <laughs> Ordinary people help me get through a relationship. Um, you know, I usually get that, but somebody came up to me the other day and was like, I have eczema and I use loved one um, face and body moisturizer and it works so well. Um, one of the um, investors we are talking to, her mother, she's an elderly woman and she deals with really excessively dry skin. And she said, our moisturizer like changed her life. Wow. It, it really made uh, caring for herself much easier and more, more convenient and affordable, all of that. And so that's my favorite product. And it feels luxurious. It feels like it should cost so much more, but it's not. It's like $10. And we're so proud that we've created something that works so well, feels so good, and is affordable for everybody. Yeah, that must feel great to be and able Chrissy's to. Chrissy's favorite is the exfoliating cleanser. She loves that. Great and one. then, you know, since we launched at Amazon, our biggest seller has been the uh, cleansing wipes. So uh, oh, we've got some great wipes those. that a lot of people are using. Yes. And, and that's been our biggest seller. And those have salicylic acid in them as well, which mm -hmm. is great if you are dealing with breakouts. So I love that acne, product. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So you obviously, as you mentioned, are a celebrity. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> A minor, <laughs> minor celebrity. But that doesn't mean that there are no obstacles in the path of creating mm -hmm. a business. So I'm curious to hear from you, what's been an unexpected challenge in having this business for the past year? Well, first of all, I have to be grateful that, you know, I'm in a position where there are certain things that are easier. And I, mm -hmm. I, I fully admit that, that, you know, a lot of doors are open to me that a lot of entrepreneurs um, have to fight a lot harder to get yeah. those doors open. So I acknowledge that, but also, you know, there's still a lot of things that we all have to deal with. And one, I think with per people's personal care routines, it's hard to get someone to switch that up um, for a new product, to build that level of trust with them and make them feel like whatever they were doing before, they want to replace that with whatever you're offering them. And so we have that obstacle, just like every entrepreneur has that obstacle, and convincing someone to um, change something that's really like intimate, it's a routine, it's something that they do all the time, getting them to change that behavior and, and uh, accept a new kind of entry into that, uh, into that routine 
um, that's a challenge no matter what. And so we are, you know, a lot of it is about building the awareness so that they'll try it and then um, hopefully convincing them with the actual e efficacy of the product that is something they want to keep in their routine. So that's a challenge. I think one of the challenges is distribution and retail, just dealing with, you know, we were fortunate to be in CVSs and Walmarts, but the execution when you're uh, going that wide with so many stores around the country, it can vary, you know, the, every store manager is kind of running their own little show and, you know, the execution on the displays and all that and making sure everything's stocked, you know, that's been a challenge for us with retail. Um, and then I think just making sure there's consistency with the manufacturing and the packaging, you know, all those little things, um, those really matter when people's experience, because you only get one time to get someone to try something and then, uh, and then, you know, keep coming back. And if they don't have a great experience the first time, it's hard to get them to come back and try it again. So I think those are some of the challenges that we deal with. And, I always tell our team, we've got to build trust with people. And so whatever we do, um, we need to make sure that we are confident that we're um, building something that people can actually trust and that they'll keep coming back to. And then, of course, we got to get them to try it. So try it and then build trust with them. Yes. I think that's very relatable for a lot of people here in the audience. So how do you maintain all of your other commitments while running a business? I mean, you have multiple businesses, multiple commitments, and a family. I think for a lot of us that are also juggling parenthood, how do you kind of maintain it all while also taking care of yourself? Well, I, I mean, I'm so fortunate to have great people in my life and a great team. Uh, the team at Loved One is so skilled, and, mm -hmm. and we partner with A-Frame. They run a couple other brands as well. Um, they run a, a sun care uh, brand with uh, Naomi Osaka and, they, uh, and, and a brand uh, called Proudly with um, Gabby Union and, and Dwayne Wade. So uh, they've got a, a, a decent amount of experience now built up and mm -hmm. relationships built up and it's a really strong team there. So a lot of it's about having the right partners because my whole career has been built on collaborating with people mm -hmm. who bring certain strengths to the table that I don't have. Mm -hmm. And whether it's music, theater, television, film, and then now all these different entrepreneurial pursuits that I am involved in, all of it has been built on great partnerships with really talented people who, whose values align with me and then who I can trust to actually do the work and, and do what they say they're going to do. And so a lot of um, my success and being able to have multiple things going at the same time is having teams running those projects that I can really trust to do the right thing. And I show up for all of my endeavors. I show up for uh, weekly meetings with loved one team and, and wow. get you're, updates. You're, you're logging onto the Zoom. Yes, and... I'm on the Zoom. Wow. I'm, I'm seeing our sales numbers <laughs> and knowing which products are doing this and that and, and, and uh, testing new products as we uh, are thinking about rolling out new uh products to the line. So I'm involved, but I'm also able to uh, leave a lot of the the uh, legwork and blocking and tackling to a team that I can trust. And I think if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to do all these things. And how do you relax? Like, how do you take care of yourself and have your self-care moment? Well, Chris and I have committed to doing like a, a staycation one night a month to get away oh, from the kids. I love like you you check into a hotel. Like yes, go into elsewhere. a hotel. I love get this. Get away. I love this. Get away from the kids and very critical. Go critical. to the spa and just enjoy each other's company. And you know, I think you got to take that time for yourself and for your relationship. I think if you're in a partnership with someone, because um, because. If you don't take those moments to reset, mm -hmm. then you, you, if you don't intentionally take those moments, I think, yeah. uh, then time can get away from you, you know, because you're always going to have something to do. You're always going to have work to do. And so I think you have to be intentional about having me time or couple time mm -hmm. so you can focus on your mental health together, your relationship, all of that. And I think that's important. So important. And it doesn't happen organically. Like it's not, you're not just going to have, have a to free plan day. it. Yeah. Yes. You have to be, you have to be mindful of it and intentional about it. I think. Yes. Yeah. Well, you talked a little bit about the sales numbers and joining the zooms. 
I don't know if a lot of people know about your background, like working as a consultant yeah. <laughs> at Boston Consulting Group. And, you know, when we did our interview, you talked to me about kind of like making beats, sleeping on couches, like kind of figuring you got to this point where you yes. were like, am I going to go all in on music? Yeah. So I graduate from UPenn and my first job out of school is at Boston Consulting Group. And um, I knew I wanted to make music for a living. I knew I loved performing. I had been performing my whole life, basically, uh, whether it was in church or at school or, or, or whatever. Um, but I also had student loans to pay back. <laughs> I, um, you know, was going to this very competitive school where all my friends were going out and getting these high power jobs coming out of school. And so I was like, maybe I should, you know, look into some of these jobs. And I ended up getting hired by Boston Consulting Group. So I worked as a management consultant for three years while I was living mostly in New York and, and, and trying to get a record deal, uh, playing gigs at night, uh, inviting my, you know, bosses at work to my shows. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Smart. <laughs> Using the copier and printer sometimes to print out flyers. That's Unethical, yes. Um, we've all, we've all but, done that. We've all done. <laughs> but, you know, that was my side hustle that I wanted to turn into my full-time life, uh, making music for a living. And so, you know, I did what I felt like I needed to do at that time, worked a day job, but had the side hustle and that I wanted to turn into a career. And I think a lot of our entrepreneurial pursuits are a lot of times what start as side hustles, you know, where it's the thing that we're passionate about, the thing we're excited about, but it's not bringing in money at first. And so you got to do something else to, to support that. And so eventually I was able to um, get signed to a record deal and make my dreams come true in music. But I think I always was an entrepreneur. And I think that management consulting training just kind of helped me um, be a better business person. Um, be good at asking the right questions, um, thinking about how to put a team together in the right way. I think I learned all of that uh, at, at BCG. Yes. Well, I'd love to end with some advice for all of the entrepreneurs in the audience that have decided to like bet on their dreams, like make their side hustle their real thing, bootstrap their company. What advice do you have about taking that jump and just going for it? I think once you figured out what your superpower is, what you bring to the table that's unique and special, um, then that gives you a sense of purpose and passion. It says, I know this is what I'm meant to do, but getting beyond that and actually building a business that's going to last is really difficult. Yeah. And I think the execution uh, goes beyond having a great idea. We were speaking to some entrepreneurs a couple of weeks ago at a conference and uh, one of the speakers was talking about exactly that, the idea that pretty much there aren't many new ideas out there. Um, uh, you know, you might have a different twist, twist or this yeah. or that. There aren't a lot of new ideas, but what's really going to separate you is how you execute. And mm -hmm. part of that is um, being a great collaborator, being a great listener, being great at finding the right collaborators so that you um, know your strengths and know your weaknesses and, and know who can help complement those in one way or another. And um, so execution to me is about making those right decisions about team and, and how you build your organization that is gonna make a difference. Because the idea is, it, it is a prerequisite, but it's not sufficient to building yes. a business. Yes, it's all about the execution. That's yeah. such great advice. Well, John, thank you so much for thank sharing. Thank you. With us. So this good to see incredible. everyone. This is incredible.